Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I'm a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today we got a good old haul. Um, I, I've been doing some spending. But you know what, it's okay. Because yesterday I hit 10K on Instagram and I'm so excited. And so I just figured I would give myself a little bit of a treatment splurge and that's what I did. So I'm gonna be sharing with you what I picked up from Nordstrom and Sephora and that's about it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it and let's get right into this video. So first, I wanna first start off what I purchased at Sephora. Um, I've already done a review of this new skin tint by Kali Ray and it's already posted so I'll go ahead and link that for you. But I picked up this new skin tint. I do have it in the shade 10. The shade 10 does work for my complexion. And in short, this is one that you might wanna check out. I'll definitely have you go watch the video so you can see the details of it. I did compare it to the Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Skin Tint, so you can see both of those in action. Then I picked up from Kali Ray their Lip Plumping Gloss, and y'all, I cannot stop using this. This is good. It's supposed to plump the lips, and like I mentioned in my video, I don't know if this is gonna necessarily make my lips look bigger, but it definitely, I think, helps to fill them in so that the fine lines are not as noticeable and my lips just feel like butter. You hear? Butter. So the shade that I have is Rainbow Blow. I show it also in that same video, so check that out if you wanna see what it looks like on me, but let me tell you, this is definitely worth having and having in multiple shades. I will say that. I then picked up the Cali Ray Mascara, which I am wearing today. I don't have on any false lashes. I did add the Lancome Seal Booster Lash Primer before I put on the mascara, but this is a good mascara. It's a voluminous mascara, um, but I think it adds a lot of length and some volume. So I think it's a really good happy medium type of mascara where we don't get too much volume or not enough length or too much length and not enough volume and it does not clump um it does not transfer and i really like it for everyday wear i like for my lashes to be prevalent and to have a lot of volume so i think this is a really good everyday mascara then i went to the morphe store because i wanted to pick up some danessa myrick color fix and where i live i can only get those in store like in terms of the shades that I want at the Morphe store. So I did a Reels showing how I created a look with these four Color Fix products, but I picked up four shades. So I picked up the shade Exposed, which I'm actually wearing Exposed and Nude today, Nude 3, and I'll show y'all what that looks like in the demonstration later on. And then um, a, what is this? And a cream shade in the shade Celebration, and then a matte shade in the shade chocolate these color fix products are so everything like i initially thought these were only for the eye and then i quickly learned you can use these all over the face literally eyeshadow blush concealer bronzer lip products like anywhere on your face that you want to add a product you can use these and when they dry down i'm telling you when i say they don't budge like transfer proof crease proof water resistant, heat resistant, these do not budge. And I have to use my oil makeup remover to take them off. And that's the only way that they come off. I remember when I was using them, I put some of them on my hands and I'm like scrubbing my hands with soap and water, not budging. It was only until I got my eye makeup remover that it actually came off. So like I am addicted to those because I'm like they are going to be perfect bases and like I just I can't get enough of them. So I wanted to pick up more. I'm going to be picking up more. I already have I already have four of these I want to say. Yes. So the other shades that I have no five. The other shades that I have just to quickly show you I have brownie, um, plum wine, Fantasy, I used Fantasy in the demonstration that you just saw, and Desert Rose, and then lastly, Parade, and I'm missing one. Oh, here we go, Mermaid. I need more, I need them all. So that is the quest for the year to get all of them. <laughs> but like I said, these are just, I mean, foolproof. And, and I think what like amazes me about the products is that you can use them all over the face, and they don't 
budge, like don't budge, don't crease. Had to have to have them. Now, one of you all commented, um, I can't remember what video it was, but you were talking about lip liners and you said the best lip liner you had ever tried was by Jaclyn Cosmetics. So while I was at the Morphe store, I did pick up one of her lip liners and the shade that I got is Coffee Cake. It's what I'm wearing on my lips. I did not add any other lip products to my lips. I just lined and filled in my lips with this lip liner. And I ain't mad at it. I love this shade here. It's just like a nice kind of cooler toned caramelish shade. And it felt very smooth applying all over the lips. And I, I didn't have on anything too emollient on my lips prior to applying this. Um, and my lips now just feel like I have on a liquid lipstick that's not overly drying. Um, and it's nice, like nice. These feel like they could last all day. So I will continue to use this and report back, but I'm very happy to have this particular shade in my collection. And if these are as good as they appear to be, I will be getting more. I I'm not mad at it. Okay, um, back to Sephora. I forgot about a couple of things. So remember I told you all in a couple of videos back that I figured out a way to use the Dior Backstage Powder No Powder and I am obsessed. I used the shade 3N under my eyes in my T-zone, and this shade I think is good, but it was a little too light for all over the face. So I picked up shade 4N, and that's what I have on the perimeter of my face, and I just, I'm addicted. I think I need to do another video comparing the Dior powder with my Kosas powder, because that was my initial video that I did, and Kosas won. Now I'm like, I think I should do another one. Would y'all be interested if I did another showdown between the Dior No Powder Powder and Kosas? Cause y'all know I ride hard for Kosas. But now I'm like, ah, should I? Leave it in the comment section, let me know. Okay, and then the last thing I picked up from Sephora was I needed a sponge to use with the Dior No Powder Powder. So I picked up the one size sponge. I have already been using it. That's why I'm showing y'all this side because the other side looks very used. Um, and I, I really, really like this. Like it presses in the powder really nicely. It's nice and thick and it feels soft on the skin. So um, I think I want to pick up another one of these because I do really enjoy them. Okay, now on to Nordy's. So like I said yesterday, I was like, I hit 10K and I was running out of my moisturizer, so I needed to get another moisturizer. And then I was on the La Mer website, and I was like, well, you know, they have a body cream. Should I get it? And I said, I shall. So first, I told y'all I ran out of my moisturizer, and I love, 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 love the La Mer, Creme de La Mer moisturizer. The, you know, standard one, because they have different ones. I swear by this moisturizer. I am obsessed with this moisturizer. And when I do my skincare at night, this is my moisturizer of choice. I love how creamy it is, how thick it is, how hydrating it is. And at night, I love to use something really thick and moisturizing. So for a long time, I, I used oils. And I actually still will use oils, but this gives me like that satisfaction that just overly hydrated and moisturizing feel that I want from my moisturizer at night. Um, and then it's just got that miracle broth in it and my skin loves it. Like my skin really, really enjoys this moisturizer. So for all of last year, all of last year, I used samples the whole year because I would place an order on La Mer's website. They always send you tons of samples and I love ordering from their website because of that. So, I never really had to purchase like any of the normal sizes of the moisturizer. So this is my first time actually purchasing something more than a sample, which you don't purchase samples. Um, and I got the smallest size. I got the 0.5 ounce size because one little sample, it takes like, depending on how big the sample is, it could take you a month to two to three months to go through it. So let me show you. Um, when I went to Nordstrom, I got a ton of samples too, Alex. If you're watching this, you hooked a girl up. Thank you so much. So here's a little tiny, tiny sample. These are one of the samples that you can get from the La Mer website, or if you go to a counter and they have them, you can uh, get that. No lie, y'all. This size will last you a month if you use it once a day for a month. 
I promise you. And if you get a deluxe size, which is gonna be larger than this, this will last you between two to three months. I'm not lying. I got, like I said, I went through all of last year on these little samples. So I got the 0.5 ounce size, um, and I suspect that this will get me at least through April, maybe even May. And then at that point, I will probably buy a larger size, but I knew yesterday I was gonna be making a pretty large purchase, so that's why I went with this size. But like I said, Alex hooked me up with like five more samples, so I will be using my samples before I even dip into this. So yeah, like I said, if you've got a La Mer counter near you, either go in, like go to the counter and ask them for samples. They love to give you samples, um, or order from the website. They always throw in some, and like, I am obsessed with La Mer. Okay, so got the moisturizer, and like I said, I was looking at the body cream, and I was like, all right. I think I want to splurge and get me the body cream. So I thought I purchased the body cream. This is actually the reparative body lotion. So I just realized like right when I sat down to film this video, I realized I got the wrong thing. I wanted the body cream and I got the reparative body lotion. However though, I have tried this and y'all this is nice. Now I'm like conflicted because it's a lightweight lotion. Okay, so that's what it looks like and it feels really really good on the skin it is actually pretty hydrating i love this scent it smells like the typical la mer scent and it's just nice like it's so nice however the body cream which is what i sampled yesterday is thicker and that's what i wanted because my skin is quite dry especially the skin on my hands nowadays you know always washing our hands and then my legs and my feet so I just placed an order for the body cream because I want the body cream, but now I'm debating like, do I keep this one or do I send it back? I think this would be a really good uh, lotion for the summertime when you don't want something too thick. It would be perfect for the summer. Or if you just don't have excessively dry skin, but you want something really hydrating, something really so like your skin feels so soft even with this. So I can't wait until I actually get the body cream, but I'm like, do I keep both? Is there a place for both? And you already know what the answer is. So I'm just, I don't know. There's a good chance I might keep it. I told y'all I'm obsessed with the mirror. Obsessed. Okay, so then like I said, I have so many samples. Um, I'm not gonna show you all of the samples that I have, but I will show you some of them. So they threw in oh, the renewal oil. Okay, I have not purchased that one yet, but I have had a lot of samples of that and that will be an oil that I will purchase. The renewal oil is just, of all the oils that I have tried, that one has to be the most luxurious and I love the scent too. Oh, put the renewal oil on and then put on the La Mer moisturizer. Your face will feel like butter. Absolute butter, okay? That's it, that's it. Okay, then I got samples of the moisturizing soft cream, which I haven't tried, samples of the cooling cream, the eye concentrate, which I love. Like that is an eye, uh, an eye cream that like I actually do tell a difference when I use it. I mean, I'm just gonna say I am a La Mer stan. That's that. I have yet to try something from the brand that I don't love and that I will be repurchasing. So that was that, but I did not stop there. You know, Alex and I were talking and I was like, you know what, I, I want to try Clay de Po, okay? So I put on the Radiant Fluid Foundation. Oh, this is the matte version. This is the wrong one. <sighs> you guys, I just realized the Clay de Po Foundation that I got is the wrong one. Okay, this is the most absurd haul I have ever done. I tried on the Clay de Poe Radiant Foundation, okay? And that was like butter on the skin. The one that you see me applying now is the Radiant Fluid Foundation Matte. That's not what I tried on. However, this looks beautiful on the skin, so I applied it on this side of the face. I love it. I have the shade BF60, which is Deep Tan Buff. I'm gonna go back and get the Radiant one because that one, that one was just splendid. I was like, okay, now I get the hype. So 
That one was amazing. I could not get enough of it. And I was like, absolutely put that in the bag. Then I was interested in the Clay de Poe stick concealer. And I know that they've come out with a reformulated version, but in a store, they had the older version. So I was like, well, can I just try the concealer? That way, if I like the texture of it, I can order the reformulated version online. So the, uh, so Alex helping me was like, oh, Clay de Poe's concealer is the best on the market. So he wasn't talking about the stick concealer. He was talking about this one. So this is the Radiant Corrector for Eyes. I have the shade Hazelnut. And when he put this on my skin, I was like, absolutely add that to cart, absolutely. It looks so stunning, so radiant and flawless under the eyes. I could not believe it. And my under eye looks so juicy. Oh, so juicy. The shade Hazelnut, I really love the shade because although it's not really a like brightening type of concealer, I can use it on the face. And I love, I don't know, I just love everything about this tone. I tried a shade lighter and it looked a little too light, a little too ashy. So this one, this was the right one and the right shade. I am so looking forward to using this one. It has an applicator like the YSL Touche Clot Brightening Pen. And I would say the formulation is similar, very lightweight, but the coverage is so much more with Clay de Pose versus YSL Touche Clot Brightening Pen. Um, I haven't tried the Touche Clot, uh, what is it, full coverage pen. I haven't tried that one yet, but um, this one has really, really good coverage as well. So then, Alex didn't stop there. He was like, you know, Clay de Poe is cool, but I love Chanel foundations. And I was like, as I do I, let's journey over to Chanel. So he pointed out that I should give the um, Healthy Glow Foundation, Hydration, and Long Wear Foundation a try. And I was like, well, wait, I have the Healthy Glow. I have this one, but these are different. So I have the Healthy Glow Foundation and it stops there. This is hydration and long wear. <laughs> so I have on this Chanel foundation on this side of the face and I did get shade BD71, which is typically the shade that I do wear in Chanel. And y'all, I really like it. Like, I feel like it's nice and glowy, um, but it's not overly dewy. It's not overly anything. It's just really beautiful and radiant. And so just to, you know, quickly insert footage with the Clay de Poe Radiant Fluid Foundation, the matte version, I think that one still looked really pretty on the face, but I, y'all, like the other one just took my breath away. Like literally jaw dropping took my breath away. But looking at both of these foundations in natural lighting, they look amazing they look really beautiful and then i wanted to take it out and uh, natural lighting outside and in the sunlight and i think once again both of these foundations look so pretty on the face i think the clay de Poe foundation definitely has more coverage than the chanel does and i'm fine with that chanel i would say we get a nice light to light medium type of coverage and then with clay de Poe, i think we can get like a strong medium potentially to full coverage like medium full Flash photography, both sides looked amazing. Um, so I'm very excited to try, or to get, I should say, the correct Clay de Poe foundation, because you guys, you have to see that one in action. It's amazing. But we weren't done with Chanel. So then I saw that they had the new spring summer um, Mediterranean eyeshadow quad available. They had a tester out and I was like, Oh my gosh, I want this one. So I sat on it because initially I thought I didn't want it. And then I saw reviews and I was like, I want it now. So they actually didn't have it in store. They sold out, but I did pick up the Le Beige Healthy Glow Natural Eyeshadow Palette in the shade Intense. This came out last year and I remember wanting to get it, but never pulling the trigger on it. And um, I felt like this looks very similar to the spring summer collection. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get this one. And this is my first Chanel eyeshadow pot. How about it? So in true Chelsea form, I went on the Chanel website yesterday and I placed an order for the eyeshadow palette, the spring summer quad. It's on back order now, um, but it said it should ship within 20 days. So I would just have both um, because you know, all the shades in here are not the same as the shades in there and vice versa. There's a couple of shades that are 
probably the same or very similar, but I was like, you know, I don't have any Chanel eyeshadow quads, so gotta start somewhere. Um, so I can't wait to get that one. Now, I did get a couple of things in PR that I wanted to share with you because I was like, yes, yes, yes. So I received the new Kostas. These are the 10 Second Eye Gel Watercolor Eyeshadows. And I have three shades. So we have the shade Simmer. And I did do a quick eye look, which I will show you all. Smolder and Heat. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to apply them directly to the eyelid, let them sit for about five to 10 seconds, and then either use your finger or a brush to blend them out. And so I was like, great, I wanna see what they look like today. So first to start my eye look, what I did was I went in with the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in the shade Nude 3 and also Exposed. I mixed them together and I blended that all over the eye as a base. Cause like I said, these don't budge. So anything you put on top will adhere better to that as a surface. So I basically used those two shades as a primer. Then I went in with the Chanel Quad and I used this beautiful olive green shade right here, which I cannot wait to use the rest of this quad because that shade blended out so well, so easily. And although it's a shimmer, it's not overly shimmery, so I can use it on the areas of the eye where I tend to like more matte eyeshadows. So built that up around here. And then I went in with these um, 10 second liquid eyeshadows. So I first went in with the shade called Smolder and applied it here. And then I took the shade uh, Heat and applied it on this eye. And then for the lower lash line, inner corner and line right like here on each eye, I went in with the shades Simmer. Now I think these shades are gorgeous. And I think that these products literally are best use for what they are, a 10 second eye look. I felt like these were a little hard to work with because they dry so quickly. So it says to wait five to 10 seconds and then blend. But I feel like if you wait five to 10 seconds, it starts to dry down. So if you just are kind of sloppily applying it over the eye, you know, now it's drying. And then I also noticed that um, harsh lines would be formed if I let it sit too long. So I would recommend for these, when you apply it, immediately start to blend. Next time I use them, I am gonna use my finger because I do think I probably would have been able to get more mobility of the shadow using my finger versus a brush because the heat from my finger could warm up the product and help it to move better. And I also think that these are really best used for those very light makeup days. Like on a day like today, if I would have just used one of these, blended it all over the eye, maybe through like a bronzer in the crease and that's it, I think these shadows really work best for those types of looks because they're not overly pigmented and applying them on my eye with other products underneath, I don't know if they liked it, you know, if they just want to be the star of the show. Um, they don't seem to play well with other shadows. So I think these could be really good, especially for people who like those just one and done eyeshadow looks. Um, if you're like me and you like to build upon your eyeshadow, play at least with three or four plus shades, then these are not gonna be the ones that you're gonna wanna use for those types of looks. I think these are, like I said, great for just one and done, quick, like 10 second eye makeup looks and keep it moving. Um, but I think the shades are really pretty. I think they have a total of like six or eight shades. They're $15, so quite reasonable and they are available now. So I was really excited to try these. Thank you so much to Kosash for sending them to me. Um, and yeah, then, and then we'll be done. Sydney Grace is coming out with two new eyeshadow palettes and these are their Be Mine eyeshadow palettes. It's a palette with 15 new shades and these are Valentine inspired shades. Each palette retails for $52. It does launch tomorrow, January 26th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and they created a light version and a deep version. So here is the light version of this Valentine's Day inspired palette. And I think these are so pretty. Y'all know I love the pink, so I'm like, yay! But I love these greens, this olive tone green. 
this plummy type of color. I love that we get some black shades. And I also love that we have some cooler tone and warmer tone shades in this palette. So I definitely will be creating an eye look with the light palette. And then I will show you the deeper palette. I love that they create palettes like this for light and deeper shades. And what I love that they do is they give you the same tone of shade. It's just one is a lighter variation, one is a deeper variation. Thank you, Sydney Grace, for doing that. I love that they did that. And I love that the shade names are the same too. So we're basically dealing with the same shade just in a version that will work better on deeper complexions and lighter complexions. Chef's kiss on that. So I think this one is just so stunning. I love, once again, the shades in this particular palette. We still have cooler tones and warmer tones. I can't wait to get into these palettes. So wanted to mention that because they do launch tomorrow and I know with Sydney Grace a lot of their products tend to sell out on launch day so if you are interested in them I will leave, leave a link down below um, so that you can check it out. And guys that's it for my little haul, little big haul. <laughs> Let me know down below if you tried any of these products that I have shared with you or if you've picked up anything new that you think I'd like to be notified of, leave it in the comment section below. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.